Hello students, welcome back to the video. We're going to be talking about acceleration. Uh, I highly implore you to take notes, and uh, so turn to the proper page of your notebook and take detailed notes today. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, we're talking about acceleration. The learning target that we're covering is this, is to calculate the acceleration, velocity, or time of travel of an object. So let's start with the definition. What is acceleration? Well, quite simply, it's the change in velocity, and remember, it's the change in speed and direction over time. Now, this is the formula for velocity, or sorry, for acceleration. A is equal to Vf minus Vi, that's the initial, or the final velocity minus the initial velocity, and that is what we call a change in velocity. We take the final minus the initial, that's represented by this delta V, and that's over T, or over the, over the amount of time it took to make that change. Now, where is acceleration used? Where is it important? Well, if you're like me and you like cars, sometimes you like to look at car stats, and you're there and you're wondering, okay, the most important car stat is what? Well, if you're karting, it's acceleration. How fast can you get off that finish line? And a lot of carts, a lot of cars have that little zero to 60 miles per hour and three seconds little spiel about them. But what exactly does that mean? Let's go ahead and do our first example problem. So again, what is the acceleration of a cart that can go zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds? Well, let's go ahead and just look at this formula. Let's see if we can figure out what the problem is. Here we have, what is the acceleration? That's our A. If we look, we have an initial velocity, which is zero, and we have a final velocity, which is 60. And then finally, we have a time, which is in three seconds. So this is listing all the things that we have. Next, we're going to need to figure out the equation we need to use. Now, this time we have a new, our new equation, which is acceleration is equal to Vf minus Vi over T, or the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the amount of time. So now we can just take that. It's already rearranged how we need it, and we can just plug and chug in our answers. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take 60, which is our final velocity, minus 0, which is our initial, and that's in miles per hour, and I'm going to divide that by 3 seconds. When I actually calculate this out, I'm going to get this number. It's 20 miles per hour per second. Now, what does that even mean, miles per hour per second? Well, what it means is this. The cart, every second, is going to accelerate 20 miles per hour more. So for every second, it's going to go up by 20 miles per hour. So the first second, it go 20 miles per hour. The next second, it's going to be 40 miles per hour. The next second, it's going to be um, another 20 miles, 60 miles per hour above that. And so that's kind of cool. That's the acceleration of the cart. Uh, and it can do 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. And it will continue to do that. So how can something accelerate? There's actually a few ways an object can accelerate. So number one is change in speed. An object can accelerate by either speeding up, and we call that, uh, we call that positive acceleration, but also we call something slowing down acceleration as well. It's called negative acceleration. So either speeding up, accelerating, or slowing down is also an acceleration. The other thing that's kind of hard to think about as well is that something can also accelerate by changing its direction. So every time you just change your direction, it doesn't matter if you're speeding up or slowing down, if you're just changing your direction, you're also accelerating. And that's because acceleration is the change in velocity, which includes speed and direction over time. So if you're changing your speed, if you're changing your direction, either way, you are accelerating. And we call that acceleration. Let's try another practice problem. So here it says, as a shuttle bus comes to a normal stop, it slows from 9.0 meters per second to 0, 0.0 meters per second in five seconds. Find the average acceleration of the bus. What we already have here listed is the final acceleration. Let's go ahead and look at some more things here. So let's, let's see what our problem is. We have the average, finding the average acceleration is what we're looking for, so that's A. 
Uh, we have our VI as well as our VF. So our initial velocity is 9.0 meters per second and our final velocity is 0.0, .0 meters per second. So now we are accelerating in the negative direction. Uh, some people might call that decelerating, but it's, it's accelerating in the negative direction. And finally, we have a time, which is in five seconds. So let's go ahead and figure out what our problem is. Or, we, or what our equation we need to use is, and it's A equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. So easy, we can just plug and chug our answers, and then go ahead and plug that into a calculator, and we're gonna get this number. Now this is, this is kind of interesting, because we had a negative nine meters, on, meters per second on top, our answer is actually in the negative. So it's negative 1.8 meters per second per second. Um, just to talk about that for, in, for a second, the negative, again, you can't go negative acceleration, but, oh, well, you can. The negative just means that you were going, you were accelerating in the negative direction or you were slowing down quickly. You were not just slowing down at a constant speed, you are accelerating to, ex to a stop. So I wanted to mention that really briefly. The other one thing I want to talk about is this meters per second per second. Um, in the last problem, it was miles per hour per second, but this time it's in meters per second per second. Whenever you have these bottom two numbers, uh, or these bottom two units, so second per second, or meters per second per second, you can actually take and simplify that. And to do so, I'm going to go ahead and just scribble out our answer and write it in the proper format. Uh, it's actually meters per second squared, uh, just by way of algebra when you rearrange those units. The seconds multiply by each other, and you get seconds times seconds, which is seconds squared. So again, if you see these two uh, being the same unit, so the bottom part is going to be meters per second, that bottom part seconds divided by seconds, which is technically over one, but it'll be meters per second squared. So just watch out for that. Let's do one final problem here. It says a babysitter pushing a stroller starts from rest and accelerates at a rate of 0.500 meters per second squared. So about half, half a meter per second squared is what's going on. Um, what is the velocity of the stroller after it's traveled for 4.75 minutes? All right, so let's just see what we have here. We, what are we looking for? What's the problem? Well, the problem is that we're looking for a velocity. Um, more specifically, we're looking for a final velocity. Now, you may not have seen this before because there's not an explicit number there, but we have up here the initial velocity. So there's VI. It says starts from rest. Um, and that's, that's actually a velocity. So starting from rest. Rest is a velocity and rest is a zero velocity. So in essence, this babysitter is starting from rest or zero and working towards a, a, a final speed, which is what we need to calculate. Uh, other thing we have here is 0.500 meters per second squared. That's an acceleration. And even if it didn't say acceleration, I would know that because it's not meters per second, it's meters per second squared. So watch out for those units there. Finally, we have a time, which is 4.75 minutes. And so now, now that we have everything listed out, let's go ahead and figure out our, our equation. So this is the original equation that we use. Um, acceleration equals to the final velocity minus the initial velocity over time. Now this isn't a good, this isn't a, an equation we can quite use as is. We actually need to rearrange this equation. So a couple of things we need to think about. Um, for some of you, this might be hard. So I'm gonna go through it step by step. What I need to do is I need to get my final my final velocity isolated, and that's kind of what I'm looking for right now. So to do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both sides and multiply it by the time, because I'm trying to get time away from this the, the bottom half or the, the denominator of this fraction over here. So I'm gonna take both sides and I'm gonna times it by time. That gets rid of the time on the right side of the equation and puts time on the left. It's just multiplied by acceleration. Um, now I need to isolate my final velocity, and hopefully this is easy for you. We're going to just take our initial velocity, and because we're subtracting it over here, we're going to add it on this side to get rid of it, and we're going to add it on that side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so here we have the acceleration times time, and then we're going to add that to the initial velocity. And that's going to get us our answer, which is the final, what's the final velocity after it's traveled. So now we can just plug and chug our stuff. So I'm going to put 0.5 zero zero meters per second squared in there that's our 
our acceleration. Now, notice time is a little bit different than what it says up there. This says 285 seconds. Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get all of my units the same. Notice we're working in seconds with our acceleration. So I just took 4.75 minutes and times it by 60 in order to get my seconds because I, I need... I need all my units the same. Finally, I'm gonna take my initial velocity, remember it started from rest, and I'm gonna add that to it. Uh, and that's gonna get us our answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in there, and it's gonna give me 142.5 meters per second. So the final velocity um, that the babysitter reaches is 142.5 meters per second, uh, which is extremely fast for pushing a baby stroller. Finally, I just want to talk to you about what it looks like on a graph when you excel when, when you show acceleration. We previously we've been talking about distance versus time graphs. Uh, what does it actually look like? Well, this is an example of an of an acceleration, and I want to see if you guys can figure out what type of acceleration this is. Um, remember, there's two types: there's speeding up and slowing down. So look at this graph for a minute. What is going on? Did you figure it out? Well, if you look, you can kind of see here towards the beginning, um, the whatever is moving, the object that is moving, is kind of going at a slow and steady pace, and then quickly it starts to speed up. Remember, the slope of the line represents the acceleration or it represents the speed. So down here we have a kind of a, a more shallow slope that's kind of a lower speed, and then up here we have a very steep slope, so it's actually sped up over time. Um, so that's one example. So what would the graph look like if, if something was slowing down? What, what do you think it would look like if it was slowing down? Take a moment, see if you can figure this one out. Come on, you can try it. Pause the video, really try it. All right, did you do it? Well, let's see. So if you wanted something to slow down and you wanted to represent that in a distance versus time graph, again, it should start off fast and then slowly get slow or start off very steep and then slowly over time get a little bit more shallow. So here we have a very steep curve. It's going really fast and then slowly it gets to a shallow curve and it's slowing down. Well, I hope that was very helpful for you. Um, this is the end of the acceleration video. I hope you learned a lot. I'm just going to go really quickly back to those learning targets just to really reiterate what went on. So here's the learning target. It says you should be able to calculate the acceleration, velocity, or time of travel of an object. And hopefully through that equation you're able to do that. Thanks for sticking with me, guys.